Hi, today I'm going to take you through a sample and how to get it up and running. Uh, the sample comes with the XML feature pack and it's the blog checker sample, specifically the part with database integration. You'll see from the basic uh, diagram here of the application, we're pulling back comments from a blog feed um, that's sort of transient data that comes from the network. We're using the XML feature pack to look through that content look for questionable comments and display them to the end user, allowing the user to sort of easily go uh, to the website on, on Blogger and delete the questionable comments. You'll see over time you would imagine the same sort of people would put bad comments onto your blog. So you'd want to take that transient data that's coming off of the um, RSS feed coming off a of blogger and you'd want to store some information so about the authors that have blogged before um, that put out questionable comments you'd want to store that out into a database specifically an XML database and you'll see in this article in developer works some good uh, explanation of how to do that in a most straightforward uh, and performant way uh, for today's demo I want to show you how to get that part of the sample up and running uh, with the XML feature pack. You may have noticed when you installed the sample and to see how to install the samples you can look at a previous demo. You may have noticed that it said that there was a JDBC data source that was not found. In fact to use all parts of the sample except for the database part you don't really need to define that uh, data source but for this part um, you're going to have to define that database um, and let me take you through that now. If you go ahead into the application server and where you installed the feature pack under feature packs XML installable apps, that's where you've loaded the sample from. You'll actually find a readme there that has a lot of the details that we're about ready to go through. So go ahead and open that. First you're going to find that um, the data that we actually need to um, use out of the database has a pretty simple uh, schema. So you'll see that here. You'll see that we need a table called spammers and it's going to need a domain name a relational column and a context XML column. So let's go ahead over to DB2 and create that table. So I'll go ahead and take the create statement and I'll come over to DB2 and create the table. So once the table is created, now I need to go over to the application server and connect to this DB2 instance. So in the application server, I'm going to have to come over here to JDBC resources. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new JDBC provider. I'm just going to do it at the server level. I'm going to say that it's DB2. Universal. Just the basic. I don't need XA for this example. And now I need to specify uh, where the GCC driver is. Um, and where the license uh, jar is. On your DB2 server, you're going to find under the DB2 directory, you're going to find a Java directory. And what you saw before, it was looking for the JCC driver. It's really important since we're going to use features in uh, JDBC 4.0 to use the JCC 4. The 4 stands for 4.0. Um, and this is where you're going to find those files. So you need to copy them over to your WebSphere server. So just to be simple for this example, I've copied them to my temp directory under DB2. Now as I said before, we need to customize this to use the JCC4 driver. So go back in and add the 4 in.
So once we've created the provider, now we need to create the data source. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the data source again. I'm just gonna do it at the server level. So the application is going to expect a JNDI name of XML data source. So I'm going to use that. We're going to go ahead and select the existing JDBC driver provider that we just defined. Uh, point it to wherever you created the uh, database and the table. Point it to your server and your port. And this would be specific to your uh, install of DB2. And go ahead and point it to an auth alias that has the credentials for connecting to DB2. So before you continue, it's probably best to test the connection. Once the connection test succeeds, you're ready to go to the application. To see if you have the application configured correctly to talk to DB2, go to the database integration checker and view the database. If you get back a screen like this, this means that you've co correctly connected to the database. So it's actually seeing no rows in it currently. So go ahead and get all the blogs. And you'll see that of the people that are spamming out there, some haven't put their email address, so we can't store them away. But you can see there are certain people that are blogging where now we have the option in this part of the sample to add the email to the database. So now you can see, after we've updated the database, the spammers that are stored in the database, the name, the email, and the URL uh, is recorded. Taking a look at what's in the database, you can see that what's in the database now is that for the domain email.com, that's where that spammer was from, we now have an XML column that has all the spammers from that domain and specifically has one spammer with the name of Joe Smith with the email of jsmith at email.com and their URI here. Um, and you can see that we're storing that information in the XML column and then we're going to use that data um, when we reload the uh, web pages. So going back to this, now instead of um, just loading from the blog, which we'll do again, now you can see we're also loading XML data from the database. So now when we saw that Joe Smith from email.com uh, was blogging um, bad comments, we can actually mix that uh, data with what's in the persistent store in DB2. And we see that that uh, spammer is already in the database, but there happened to be two more. So let me go ahead and add the other uh, Joe Smiths. You can see that this is jsmith2 at email.com. And you can see that this is uh, jsmith2 at email2.com, so a different domain. And now if I reload, you can see everyone's in the database. If I come back here to the database, You can now see that I have a row in the uh, table that is from email.com and I've got an XML uh, column that's got the original Joe Smith, which we had before. Uh, but now I also have a different Joe Smith uh, with a different email address from that same email.com domain. And then I have a second row that from email2.com uh, you can see that I have a different Joe Smith. Maybe I should use different names, uh, but you get the picture. So it's a mix of relational uh, and XML data, and I'm using that data as I navigate the web application. So I'm, I'm really um, taking the data from the collection that's coming back from the blog feed, and I'm mixing it with data that's coming out of the database.